Have you ever wanted to make your own soap, but you're afraid to mess with the lye? Keep watching. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple tips with working with lye. Nothing complicated. Don't be scared. You don't have to suit up like you're visiting aliens. First thing, gloves. Don't use them. Here's why. What happens is the gloves are fine as long as you don't splash. The second you splash something down inside the glove and it's trapped against your skin, it's just like hot plastic, hot metal with welders. You're going to get more of an injury with the glove than you would without. If you spill lye on your skin, rinse it with cool, clear water, period. Don't worry about all that white vinegar stuff. That's a, that's a wives' tale. The acid in the vinegar is not any better at neutralizing the lye than plain old water. You can use it. It's not going to hurt you. You'll smell like a salad all day. Number two. The fumes. I, I, I'm used to the fumes. I'm not a great example for safety when it comes to that. But honestly, you can mix it outside and you're fine. Just, you know, obviously don't put your face right over top of it. Mix it outside. Keep it at arm's length. Mix your thing. Walk away. Let it sit. Make sure there's no pets or kids around that are going to knock it over and, you know, spill it on themselves or try to drink it, whatever. You know, common sense will take you a long way. So just make sure that you're in a ventilated area. I'm inside back against this wall. I have my air conditioning and heat unit. That blows across here and that disperses the fumes throughout the room and then it vents out. I'm okay. It may be a little tight for you. If you're near an open window, perfect. If you have a vent fan over your stove, perfect. So. Just use some sense, be careful, don't stand there and huff it, not good for you. The other thing, when you stir, check this out. You can use plastic, metal. The metal you have to use stainless. This is stainless. Even with stainless, you can see it still turns dark after a while. Now, part of that's because I don't rinse this between lye mixings. It doesn't need to be. I keep it in one spot by itself, nobody touches it. But pour your water into your pitcher first. Weigh it out. Get it ready. Always pour your lye into the water. Got that? Pour the lye into the water. Don't pour water into a pile of lye. You will have a bad reaction and there's a good chance that it will burn you. At the very least, it will make a mess and waste materials, okay? When you're mixing, you can use, like I said, wooden spoon. If you use anything that's porous, like a wooden spoon, dedicate it to that job. That is the only thing that that spoon should ever do the rest of its days on this earth. I would not cook with that because it soaks in whatever you're cooking it or whatever you're mixing it with. Um, I use this whisk. Even though it's stainless, I can wash this and whisk my eggs up tomorrow morning. I'm not going to. I've dedicated this little whisk. This, its only sole purpose in life for the rest of its life is to mix my lye water. Okay? Same thing with these pitchers. Plastic's way more porous than you think. I will never use this for anything other than mixing lye. Next thing, safety glasses. Again, I'm not the best example for safety. I'm an old hard head carpenter, so I'm going to tell you what you should do. If you ever see me in a video doing something, it may not be right. Don't be afraid to call me out on it. That's fine. But don't always just follow my example. I don't wear eye protection. And that's, that's a bad thing. It's, it's a bad habit that I picked up years ago. I don't wear it when I'm working with my circular saw. Nothing. But there's a couple ways you can go. I do keep stuff on hand because... My daughters do help me, and I, I don't want them taking the chances that I take. Inexpensive safety goggles. These are sort of like the ones you use in chemistry class in high school. Um, you can pick these up for, you know, two, three, four dollars at the big box store, or whatever. Really, honestly, you're not you're not trying to seal this against your face. 
what you're doing is you're guarding against little splashes that happen. You can also use regular glasses. They look like reading glasses. Uh, they, they may have a little shield on the side, but they're still kind of open here and at the top, and they're okay. It, it helps. It's better than nothing because basically you're trying to avoid a head-on splash into your eyeball. You've only got two, so protect what you've got. And I, and I need to start following that. I will start putting these on. Um, I have some vision problems. I need to go to the doctor and get that straightened out. Part of my problem is when I put this on, this thin piece of clear plastic screws with my vision. I, I don't know. It's clear. It should be looking like, like looking through a windshield, but it messes with my vision when I'm trying to read the scale. And so, yeah, I know excuses. Let's see. Anything else with lie? Keep it in uh, airtight containers. I keep mine, I order mine honestly in two pound jars. It's easier for me to deal with shipping. It's easier for me to measure out. I can order it in a big sack and then transfer it to a, an airtight bucket, but then I have to open it several times to dole it out into smaller quantities. To me, it's easier just to deal with those bottles. Do I pay a little bit more? Yeah, but for the convenience, for right now, it's worth it. Something else, you didn't see this on my stuff, but I, I'm in a shop too. I know, I keep walking away from the camera, sorry. Okay, I used to do this at home. I had a room and a space with a workbench just, it looked identical to this at home, where I kept my soap stuff. You don't see any labels on this. That's bad if you're at home. And, and again, I've made that mistake. I'm not, I'm not trying to point fingers at you guys and act like, you know, I, I'm uh, innocent in all this. Mark it, lie, put a skull and crossbones on it. Do you remember the old Yuck stickers, Mr. Yuck, the green guy? If you've got them, put them all over the place on this thing. Okay, something that your kids are gonna know, don't touch. Your dogs, I can't help you, just keep it up out of their reach. The good news is they don't have thumbs. All right, so, Mark them. Mark them well. Keep them up out of reach. And if the kids are like my five-year-old little monkeys that can climb pretty much a flat, smooth surface, which mine can, it's like having a fly in the house. So, you know, mark it. She knows, even though she gets goofy and she doesn't always follow directions, she knows when she sees that sticker, don't touch. Because she knows it'll hurt her. Whether it's bleach, ammonia, anything. Uh, um, we don't use much plant fertilizers, but there, you know, cleaning stuff, anything like that. Even some medications I'll mark with a Mr. Yuck sticker because even though it has a flavor or a scent to it that may be appealing to the kid, which is to get them to take their medication, when they're not sick, if they sit there and chug a bottle of cough syrup or something that was prescribed, they're going to get sick. So, all right, this is about lie. Again, mark your containers, keep them clear and uh, very noticeably harmful so that your kids will learn to leave them alone. What else? Closed toed shoes. <sighs> Most of the time, uh, I don't know, you could go either way with this. If you have flip flops on or something and you spill the lye, you're gonna get it on your skin, go rinse it in cold water, it's fine. Closed toed shoes. I like wearing closed toed shoes because I tend to drop things on my toes. But if you're going to wear closed toed shoes, wear solid shoes. Like I, I wear work boots a lot, so it's easy to clean off. It's not going to soak right in. The shoes that I'm wearing right now are uh, CrossFit shoes and they have the vented top between your toes and the laces. That's bad. That lets the liquid go straight in through that venting and again, just like the gloves, it allows that, that stuff, the lye, to get trapped between the material and your skin. And by the time you get the shoes off, you're already starting to burn. Now, it's not like an acid, like a, a sulfuric acid or things like that, where it's going to instantaneously burn your skin most of the time. It can, but it's it, once it's been in water, odds are you're going to have some working time with it to get it cleaned off. Uh, or if you, And if you do get a burn, it'll be more like a mild chemical burn or a sunburn so it will heal pretty decent. I've never had one, you know, fester up and bubble up. That means you've just sat there and left it on for no reason. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. 
Have a great afternoon, and uh, maybe we'll do another Shave Soap video tomorrow and get into a little bit more detail or at least go through the whole process. All right, guys. Talk to you.